dear students. Uh, today, we will uh, go ahead with the continuation of our discussion over the code acquisition systems and the performance analysis of those code acquisition systems related to direct sequence reception communication systems. Uh, we will continue today over the uh, same and um, especially today's discussion topic will be the rapid acquisition mechanisms uh, over through the match filter techniques. And we understand that the in uh, code acquisition, uh, overall in the synchronization, especially in the code acquisition, acquisition time is a very important and very critical issue uh, with respect to the system design concerned. And uh, we always try to minimize the acquisition time. The acquisition time is a measurement of how fast you are getting the synchronized situation or synchronization point, how fast you are uh, detecting the synchronization point and you are declaring this both the signal is um, locally generated PN sequence is now synchronized with the incoming signal. Uh, so, that actually the data recovery can start now. So, getting as fast as possible the synchronized point is of very, very important issue to us and hence uh, the rapid acquisition mechanisms are really very interesting for the system engineers. So, let us see today how the matched filter technique can expedite the acquisition technique that we have already discussed in the last three classes. The technique still now we have discussed is something like that, that in the direct sequence for spectrum acquisition mechanism, the measurement of the P n uh, correlation uh, is produced, the measurement uh, of the correlation uh, is the fundamental part. We saw in the block diagram that the incoming signal is getting correlated with the locally generated P n sequence and then it is output is uh, correlated output is fed into a detector calm threshold um, decision device, uh, which is based on the threshold. And uh, finally, we are declaring the output of that uh, threshold device, which is also having a verification algorithm is finally, declaring whether you got the synchronization point or no or not. So, fundamental part is to get the p n correlation measurement and then have a detection, some decision on that correlation measurement, whether it is very high, whether it is close, whether it is not close to each other and then what to do about if they are not close is the total uh, task under the synchronization. The acquisition techniques that till now we have discussed, there we have seen that the, this acquisition measure is obtained by the active correlator circuits, where the incoming signal is continuously entering into the receiver and as if the P n sequence is continuously getting multiplied with the uh, with the incoming signal. So, the both the both the incoming signal as well as the locally generated P n sequences are completely running. So, both of them are running. So, they are the active correlator the way the whole structure is uh, called the active correlation mechanism. Um, so, for example, the way we did is, so we understood the single dual search mechanism, where the search will be done and uh, decision will be made based on the single observation interval and uh, the received p n signal plus noise, we saw that it is getting multiplied with a local p n reference over the and it is integrated over a duration of tau d seconds. So, tau d was the dual time, single dual time to us. And uh, this result was then asked to make uh, an acquisition decision and by comparison with the threshold. So, this was the true two steps already we have discussed in the last module and we have done the probability of detection, probability of false alarm calculation based on these philosophy. When uh, such it, such this multiply and integrate, so fundamentally two blocks were running in those acquisition systems, one is the multiplier and uh, then is an integrator. So, an integration was running over a duration of tau d and here is the acquisition uh, declaration. So, this multiplier and integration type of this correlation detector architecture, uh, it is typified by the fact that this local generator who is uh, fed into this multiplier 
circuit in the multiplier block, they are continuously, this is they are the running PN sequences. So, as if, if it is running continuously and the incoming signal R t is also a running fact, continuously the signal is coming and here it is also a running one, none of them are static, then it is happening something like this. Every set of the R t, I mean if I consider this is a length over which the multiplication is going on and this is a set over which the correlation, whole correlation operation will go on. So, this the number of the chips over which this multiplication and addition is going on. Uh, every time it is going like this for every new set of the RT values, sampled values, a new new set of the PN sequence, um, PN sequence is getting multiplied. It is not like that. You have a selected set of the PN sequence and you have uh, continuously this is moving and you are trying to compare the selected set of the PN sequence with the with the piece of the RT. When the RT is changing, your PN sequence is also contiguously running. So, over the dwell interval, over the, over the single, over the dwell time, uh, every dwell time if you try to compare, it is heavily possible that the PN sequence values that are coming in within the dwell time interval they are not constant, the, it is continuously running. So, the phase is also expected to change also after certain interval. And uh, if I quantify that um, how actually this new set of the chips are coming into picture, what are those number of the set of the chips that is getting compared with the incoming uh, set of the or uh, portion of the RT it will be given by capital M is equal to we understand tau d uh, divided by the T c number of the chips. So, these are the new number of the chips over which are getting multiplied with R t that every set the M is same, but those number of the number of the chips are same, but the type of the chips that are the values of the chips that are coming inside that set they are varying. So, if this is a situation for active correlation. So, fundamentally the time after which you are getting a decision about the estimated phase difference between the locally generated waveform uh, with respect to the incoming uh, p n sequence waveform, uh, that uh, gap and that phase offset only you get after an interval of tau d seconds, because this is the dwell time. At the end of this only you will be declaring that this is the offset happening and this is the amount of the offset we have got and at the end of that tau d seconds interval only you will be going to update the phase value of the locally generated waveform. If I now consider the rate at which in the single dwell system I am updating the phase of the locally generated waveform is given by R 1 d basically the rate at which you are updating the phase interval will be given by 1 by tau d into 1 by capital N chip position per second, because 1 by N chip increments, if we are thinking that we are continuing the search in 1 by capital N chip increments and uh, the search rate we is then giving by in terms of this 1 by n chip in interval. So, 1 by tau d is the rate at which at the tau d is the time duration after which you are taking the decision. So, the rate at which you are going to take the decision is 1 by tau d of 1 by n chip positions. So, search is running at the rate of 1 by n chip duration and decision is coming at the gap of tau d interval. So, the rate is in terms of your 1 by n chip uh, positions per second and uh, this is given by equation 1.1. So, the search rate of this DS acquisition system is uh, now 1 by tau d of 1 by n chip duration and uh, we are really not happy with this kind of the time involved to acquire the search to complete the search. And um, so, decision uh, needs to be much more faster in practice and uh, we need to search for some other techniques, mechanisms and methodologies which can improve this um, rate at which the synchronization is obtained. That is why actually the passive correlator device that is uh, that involves a match filter basically is invoked. 
and uh, this uh, multiply integrate uh, multiply integrate that mode of the acquisition mechanism which is going on by multiplication and the integration that block will be completely removed by a match filter now and this match filter device will be implemented by the state of the art technology for example charge coupled devices surface acoustic uh, wave convolvers or discrete time correlators. We will see the structure with the discrete time, discrete time correlators uh, to implement the match filter uh, methodology in the rapid acquisition mechanism today. So, we understood the need, we understood that the way the direct acquisition system using the architecture of multiplication and integration was going on that is not giving a very good rate of acquisition. So, we are searching for a new architecture and we believe that match filter based technique can give us that, but why, but what amount the acquisition will be improved if I, if I implement match filter based technique that is a question till now that we will answer at the end of this module. Uh, remember in the continuous time case uh, the received P n waveform plus the noise, I mean the R t your R t plus n t this uh, received P n waveform plus noise it will be convolved first with some in match filter techniques your R t plus n t will be first multiplied with uh, some uh, known set or prefixed set of the P n sequence the replica of a part of the P n sequence uh, and uh, say capital M number of the chips we have taken and for m capital M number of the chips actually the number of the chips will be keeping constant and this will be continuously getting multiplied with the incoming signal. And then the continuous time output is will be also continuously getting tested against a predefined threshold. So, there is a detector who is having a, a threshold eta and this continuous time multiplied output or correlated output it will be continuously checked by this uh, detector against that uh, threshold value and uh, when acquisition has uh, occurred that means that multiplied value is crossing the threshold value it will be declaring a um, uh, hit or there is a synchronization point achieved. And uh, in this match field, this is the match filter architecture and when this where actually the key difference from the earlier architecture is that the P n sequence segment is not moving for a typical kind of the test. Uh, one still you are not getting one hit, you are not moving actually taking any decision to change the P n waveform, change the chips of the P n uh, segment. And uh, once the input, input is consumed continuously sliding actually input is sliding past and uh, this is the stationary and uh, so uh, the stored P n waveform replica which is actually now getting compared continuously when the synchronization um, uh, point uh, is got and uh, you are declaring it is done. So, you are after that you are typically enabling the tracking mechanism. So, after getting that you are getting the tracking mechanism and for a certain period of the time you are actually continuously um, multiplying with the same set of once the synchronization is, uh, is uh, achieved you are continuously multiplying with the same set of the incoming signal. But uh, once actually there is uh, not a heat then you are changing it and you are trying to check it over with a new set of the uh, income with a new set of the P n sequence. And uh, we understand that this in a typical direct sequence per spectrum system, this uh, incoming P n code will be typically by phase modulated on a carrier and uh, again the carrier phase is yet unknown to the receiver. So, that concept is still uh, preserved that you do not know anything about the phase of the carrier. So, carrier synchronization is not done yet. Uh, given this structure and basic understanding of this match filter based implementation of the code acquisition mechanisms, uh, the match filter can be implemented either in the analog domain or in the uh, digital, I mean it can be in the baseband or in the band pass, um, in the band pass version and uh, there are the two options which are given here in the figure. Figure 1 is uh, 1 a is a band pass version of this mass filter implementation and uh, b is a low pass equivalent or baseband version of it. 
In a band pass version what we do is uh, the receive signal plus noise has uh, entered and this is a band pass matched filter. What is the meaning of it we will see in the equations later on. And this is the band pass match filter where which actually will take care. I mean the filter function, I mean uh, the transfer function of the filter will be designed in such a way that it, uh, it is matched with the received signal definitely that is a function of a match filter. But uh, the signal will be band passed and the band passed signal is now put into the square law envelope detector and uh, threshold devices will be the next block to follow and code phase decision you are getting at the output. Now, what is the difference of the low pass equivalent circuit of this band pass circuit is this receive signal plus noise after receiving uh, in the receiver front end. What we do is either we um, use the fact that we have estimated the frequency of transmission, center frequency of transmission which is written here as omega 0 which is the radian of the uh, carrier frequency expressed in the radian. I mean either you are um, uh, estimating this value of omega 0, I mean equivalently the center frequency f c or you are um, uh, utilizing the um, pre uh, a priori known value of the f c of the transmission. But remember the associated phase is not known to you. So, this is there is some ambiguity over the phase and uh, the carrier you have generated with the a priori knowledge of this omega 0 or by estimated um, value of this omega 0. And once you understand omega 0 and with some approximate phase uh, associated with that uh, you are uh, you are dealing with, then we can definitely actually generate uh, the in phase as well as the uh, out of phase uh, to carriers here. And um, hence actually incoming signal once will be multiplied with the in phase as well as the um, out of phase uh, carriers, uh, so that we can bring both the signals uh, into the baseband. So, in the inside the baseband actually we um, then utilize uh, the match filter and the low pass, low pass version and the we utilize the match filter as the same thing and the square law envelope detectors are there and then the threshold devices are going on. Uh, remember one thing uh, sometimes we this omega 0 may not be actually uh, selected to be exactly the FC we can sometimes bring it down to the some IF value also is not purely at the baseband value equal to 0, uh, but we sometimes actually bring it down to the IF also in that case actually you also need a baseband match filter which will be mm, not uh, centered around the IF frequency of your uh, down conversion. So, now the I phase matched filter square law detector output and the Q phase uh, square law detector output, they will be added up here to get the threshold to, to feed to drive the threshold device. So, that actually you can have a decision on the code phase. Remember here we never put actually the two two different threshold devices one for the I and one for the Q that is there is no meaning of it. Because synchronization demands actually there should be one phase offset with the incoming signal of uh, compared to the locally generated with the locally generated one and uh, that phase uh, should be corrected. So, decision should be done over the combined signal of the in phase and the Q phase and uh, the threshold device will be uh, helping us to do that. Now, little bit inside the um, uh, architecture. So, as we were as I was explaining in the last slide the same thing is written here that the band pass match filter is used whose maximum output will be detected by the square law envelope detector like the other cases we have seen. The in phase and quadrature phase carriers uh, we are we are either generating uh, or we are estimating with the generating with the a priori knowledge of the carrier or we are estimating the carrier and then we are generating. And the arbitrary phase uh, we are picking up because we do not know about the and if you do not have actually any uh, a priori information about the phase and uh, we are fine with that it we can go ahead with that and uh, then we will proceed with the baseband match filters. So, then the match filter outputs are uh, remember one thing as I have already told in the previous slide that if you are bringing it if it is not the center if it is not an IF frequency then it would not be a bad band pass match filter once again then it should be replaced by a baseband match filter. It will be a baseband match filter 
both the uh, both the i and q section because in that situation you are bringing it down directly to the baseband there is no i f frequency involved if w0 is related to the i f frequency then you may need another baseband pass match filter which is uh, which is uh, actually centered around the i f frequency okay so um, uh, based on that you are using it and uh, designing the filter and at the output of the next we are doing the threshold testing actually um, uh, it can be very easily visualized. This implementation of this match filter will be very easily uh, visualized by the tapped dual align um, filter design, and that we will see actually in the next slide how we are going to do that. And um, squalor detector in the earlier case, the output of the squalor detector, who is giving the maximum output uh, when the filter is really matched with the input signal that uh, follows the uh, fundamental theory of the match filter operation. And now, this is the uh, structure that we will be able to see if we are using the match filter uh, architecture, the tab delay line architecture. The delay line architecture means actually there are the delays, cheap delays, uh, the all the coefficients of the filter that you are designing, they are basically delayed by the cheap, one chip duration and they are all of them are weighted by some value of the d. d is um, can be actually having a different value. In our case, we will consider it is a plus and minus 1 and output of all these weighted um, filter taps will be added up here and then they pass to a filter whose filter function, transfer function will be given by p star w and what is this p star w? p star w is the Fourier transformed version of our p t, p t is the spreading sequence waveform okay base wave waveform uh, for the spreading sequence so it's a fourier transform will be given by e star w and here is the output of the filter match filter so what the what i meant here is we will come back to this figure once more what i meant here is this structure is now getting fit will be fit inside this filter baseband filters in the match filters so, whatever I have written here in the box, if you now try to zoom inside it, that box will be implemented like this architecture. Why actually it is like this, we, we will see actually in once we are writing the equation of the match filter techniques in the next slide. So, uh, we would revisit, we will revisit the fundamentals of a match filter. Match filter is basically a passive device hmm? and we understand that it is uh, maximizing the signal to noise ratio at its output. When the signal at its input is embedded in AWGN or additive wide Gaussian noise, provided the filter function, filter is perfectly matched with the incoming signal. So, if this is the fundamental of the match filter. Let us take an example. In terms of mathematics, suppose I have an input signal S t, its duration is t 0. Then the impulse response of the filter that, uh, that we should design to declare it as a matched filter should be such that the response will be just reverse of S t in its t 0 seconds time slot and mathematically it should be written as h t is equal to s t 0 minus t over the duration of 0 to t 0. Otherwise, the uh, response of the filter should be equal to 0. If I take the Fourier transform of it, this is the impulse response of the filter. In the time domain, we will call it impulse response and um, in frequency domain, if I come, then it will be the transfer function. of the filter. It is simply just a Fourier transform of this H t and hence you will get the um, S star w, the Fourier transform of S t and the, now the time delay will be reflected as the phase uh, on the phase of this signal and uh, of, the, of the filter function and then this is the t 0 by amount of which you are able to see the reflection on the phase of that um, filter taps. Now, uh, suppose we have a ST, 
in our case direct sequence phase spectrum communication we have an ST which corresponds to capital M chip segment of a PN waveform because remember in our case my ST that is this is the general expression of any match filter. Now we have to look inside what ST we are dealing with. In the ST that we are dealing with looks like this equation 1.4. We have a, a spreading sequence PN waveform where dn is the value of the it, it signifies the polarity of each and every chip we are having capital m number of the chips so the st is constituting of the capital m number of the chips value of each and every chip may be either plus 1 or minus 1 and pt is the basic pulse waveform and uh, this is the tc is the duration of that chip so this is the signal i mean pn waveform now we are dealing with inst instead of our small st okay now if this is the situation and if i substitute this value in the, in the filter function our target is to see what will be the output of the filter what the filter function should look like for a baseband filter match filter now uh, that um, pt will be plus 1 or 0 otherwise it will be whereas for the band pass match filter this uh, pt should be square root of 2 cos omega naught t over this duration or 0 otherwise. So, if I take the Fourier transform of this signal, so target is what we have to take the Fourier transform of this signal and substitute it in term inside your star w to get the frequency domain interpretation operation of this uh, filter total filter h w. So, I if I take the Fourier transform of the signal I will be ending up with what this pt will give me the p star w dn summation of this term will be remaining as it is and uh, instead of your and this whole shift over the time it should be reflected to me as an e to the power minus I should get so sw to me a star w to me is becoming as p star w summation n is equal to 1 to capital M dn then e to the power minus j omega n minus 1 into tc and remember in this h omega term inside that h omega term in that h t earlier you please go back you see that inside h t you have another e to the power minus uh, j omega t 0 this t 0 is nothing but now to us now it is capital M into T c because within the T 0 was the duration of the signal inside the duration of the signal we have capital M number of the chips each of the chip is having the chip duration of T c. So, T 0 is equal to capital M into T c if I now substitute this value of P star W, P star w inside it of uh, a star w inside this expression of h w. So, we will be ending up with this expression and here we will be having one term e term from minus j omega t 0 if I replace it it will be minus m into t c and here we are having another term of expression e, e to the power minus j omega n minus 1 into t c and if you just add them up finally, you will be ending up with equation 1.7. So, fundamental conclusion is that uh, transfer function of this matched filter for your direct sequence per spectrum signal and um, for with a pn sequence actually uh, you, you should be looking like this it should be looking like this so it's a fourier transform of the baseband basic pulse and with the con governed by the polarity of each and every chip and multiplied with this amount of the delay this amount of the phase changes involved actually per uh, each and every per each and every the frequency based each and for each and every filter tap and uh, with this understanding we will continue in the next module some further detail of this uh, match filter technique where we will reuse this filter function and we will try to uh, see filter transfer function and we will try to see uh, how the uh, acquisition time is getting reduced if I utilize this match filter technique.